It being 7 o'clock, we'll open the planning board meeting for Monday, October 24th, 2022. Uh, first off, let me ask, is anybody planning on recording the meeting tonight? Okay. So, um, in addition to tonight's video recording on Oxford cable access pursuant to the Massachusetts Open Meeting Law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Just Those making a recording must inform the chair, if possible, having visual. Oh yeah, I'm not that. All attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. All right. Is that my phone? Yeah. So the first part of the meeting will open up to the uh, plans not requiring subdivision approval. Since we do not have any of those, we won't do that. Um, you want to jump to something quick? Go ahead, Tony. Sure. Uh, just as we're going through the agenda, under submissions, um, we have not received, we placed this on the agenda as a placeholder for a scenic road special permit. Um, we have not received a completed application. Um, however, just to provide a, I guess, a preview um, for one time being a road application for a special permit, um, and this is relative to the scenic road designation on Dana Road. Uh, the applicant is seeking to alter a stone wall um, within the limits of the road and right away. Um, the applicant is seeking a driveway permit, um, but until such time as they receive the permit approval from this board, um, the driveway permit is, is on hold. Um, we do anticipate getting a complete application soon. Uh, we would have it on the agenda for uh, the next meeting as a submission. It will require it to be advertised um, through the traditional uh, process for a special permit. Mm -hmm. Probably a break in the, wouldn't a break in the stone wall on each side. Right. right. So at this time there is no no uh, completed submission before the board to, to schedule a public hearing. Okay. And we don't have any minutes to look through. We have no minutes to approve. Okay. All right. So we gotta. Will we wait another two minutes? Unless you can do the uh, planner report in two and a half minutes. <laughs> a very, very brief report, as whether it was now or later in the evening. Um, but I, I will be sending an email out um, tomorrow, just some upcoming uh, events with CMRPC and um, and the um, uh, planner training collaborative um, over at Holy Cross. Some new dates um, or new workshops upcoming. That the board may be interested in. If there's any interest, by all means, um, let us um, let us know, Mary or I, and we'd be happy to, uh, to register um, members. So um, I know, Mr. Chair, I know you and others have partaked in, in this meeting and uh, did, um, a good state of upcoming workshops. Mm -hmm. um, most are, are um, virtual now too, which, which is uh, appreciated, <laughs> um, and, um, and so looking forward to that. And CMRPC. Um, they have their Imagine 2050, our, it's not theirs, it's ours too, right? Um, uh, vision Master Plan for the Region. Um, there is a survey um, that we'll be posting also on the town social media uh, regarding all things transportation uh, throughout the region. So, uh, so I'll be happy to share that um, tomorrow with, uh, with all the members. Awesome. Thank you. All right, being 7.05, we're going to have a continued public hearing for 46, 48, and 50 Harwood Street, application for a special permit and land disturbance permit applicant and owner is DJ Enterprises Incorporated, <coughs> common driveway to serve three lots. So I don't think we have, we have nothing new on that? Nothing new. Um, the last update was the report from Graves Engineering, uh, which I've 
provide an, uh, an additional copy of it. It's been some time. Um, July. The report was completed over the summer. I will note to the board that the action date is around the corner, um, November 14th on this one. Um, we did um, reach out to the applicant too. I don't know if there's anyone in the audience um, on this um, item, but we have not heard anything further from the applicant. And we're waiting for information, right? They would. would that Ideally, there was a response from the from the peer review um, from from Graves. Okay. Uh, we should still try to get them to sign a. a movie action. Well, that's right. So we'll have to vote on it at the next meeting, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I would like to enter, I would like to make a motion that we submit a form to the yeah. pro proponent of this uh, development. And have it filled out with a, uh, a new time of action date yes. yeah. to be completed and submitted to this board for our next meeting. Yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, motion by Rich, seconded by Jeff. Any discussion on that? Do we want to indicate? That if there is no response, we reserve yeah. the right yeah, to. I would okay, if there is no response, then we'll the deny the application. We'll deny the application without prejudice. No. Without prejudice. Well, we could. Well, we, we, there's a possibility we could approve it on the 14th too, if everything comes together in the perfect world. But we don't want to like threaten anybody, do we? No. Well, we want to let them know that they 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 ran out of time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sounds good. And I would create I, a sense of urgency. Yeah. yeah. Well, but but, I, I, think but I also suggest that we make the action date into Jan January because again there's only going to be one meeting in December if they're not but it's just I don't know I don't know where they stand they don't even come in here to you know, give us an update in, in it's yeah. just that like they disappeared and like Tony said he put something in there dated July 8th from Graves we've never received any response what's going on other yeah. than the market is changing on them right you know okay so in your motion you you suggested a date right for the next meeting we well, we're going to have a meeting on the 14th, okay, okay, but we don't want to wait till that meeting in case something should happen and we can't react and it'll get constructively approved. I don't want to do that. Well, okay, motion by Rich, seconded by Jeff. Any more discussion? Call for the vote. I'll vote aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, it being 7:10, we have a public hearing for 10 Cypress Street. Application for special permit submitted by JFC Pros Construction to allow the construction of an occupancy of an addition for use as an in-law apartment attached to the existing single family dwelling on the property located in the R3 residential zoning district. So let me start out by, yep, hold on one second. Let me start out by reading the uh, public hearing notice. Uh, pursuant to the provisions of the Oxford Zoning Bylaw, Chapter 3, Subsection 3.9, Apartments, Accessory In-Law, the Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, October 24, 2022 at 710 in the second floor meeting room of the Oxford Town Hall, 325 Main Street, Oxford, Mass, on a special permit application submitted by, excuse me, JFC Pros Construction to allow for the construction occupancy of an addition for use as an in-law apartment attached to the existing single family dwelling on property located at 10 Cypress Street, Oxford, Mass, in the R3 residential zoning district owned by Norman J. Balco and Sarah K. Balco by deed recorded with the Worcester District Registry Deed 66024, page 303, shown as Assessor's Map 33E, parcel K04. The application may be viewed at the Town Hall in the Office of the Town Clerk or the Land Management Department. Anyone desiring to be heard on this matter should appear at that place, date, and time designated, or submit written comments before the date of the hearing to the planning board at 325 Main Street Arts Mass 1540 or see masspubliconotices.org for legal notice. 
Got that out of the way. If you want to introduce yourself and give us an overview of what you're proposing. Shavaz at the owner of JFC Post Construction. I'm the general contractor. Sarah is here with me. She's one of the homeowners. She's married with Norm. They have three kids. The in-law apartment is being built for her mother. She lives in Michigan now. They lost uh, the father uh, last year, so she's living by herself. And it's, it's, this project is a family uh, project. You know, we're we're doing this to unite the mom with the with the daughter and and their their family. Um, it's not on the purpose of any any um, increasing the house value. It's not going to be a rental. It's a very actually straightforward job to accommodate the needs of the mother. Uh, as you can see on the project, we made sure that the whole um, addition stayed on one floor for her so she, she can, uh, doesn't have any stairs to, to go up or down. Uh, she's at the age that uh, she's gonna start needing help and we want to bring her close to the family so we can, we can make that happen. First off, very sorry to hear about that. Um, let's see, Tony, anything from? If I may, Mr. Chairman, um, in your packets, you do have a, a report from the Board of Health. Um, I happen to read into the record. It's dated October 13, 2022, regarding Penn Cypress Street. But dear members of the Planning Board, uh, the Board of Health at its October 12, 2022 meeting reviewed the request for a special permit regarding the proposed in law suite at 10 Cypress Street. The board commented that updated septic plans have already been submitted and approved for a new septic system at 10 Cypress Street to accommodate the additional bedroom. Prior to any occupancy of the new in law suite, the new septic system would need to be installed, inspected, and approved by the health agent. The Board of Health reserves the right to make additional comments as the project progresses and as any further plans are received. And so this was received by us on October 13th of um, course of this year, um, and standard um, comment and review, if you will, from the Board of Health. Okay. okay. Um, I know one of the things we talk about with these is the parking. Is there any kind of site plan about uh, how, where the existing parking is, where the any new parking is gonna be? So we, do you have a fairly we have like a double driveway that can accommodate her car. Okay. Is that on the um, left side of the car? Must be, oh, obviously it must be on the right side. No. Is it right in front? Yeah. I can add that to the plot plans. Uh, I didn't think it would be an issue since it's going, we have plenty of parking for it. Yeah, we just asked that because we would need to see to see and know that. Okay, no, that's fine. That's an easy do. We'll not like a one car driveway or anything, right? Five, four cars in there, I assume. Yeah, we have three right now because my daughter's driving, so <laughs> we'll fit the fourth that's car right happened. in there. <laughs> that's what, well, that's what, no, but, but that's what <laughs> happens. That's what right, and yeah. I mean, you, have, you have two other two other children that and, you know they're going to be driving too. You know, that's you know, I mean, okay. That's what you kind of have to look at. Yeah. Just want to make sure they don't go on the street. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's a lot. If we have to increase the size of the driveway, that's, that's well, it's starting to think. I mean, in the future, it's yeah, in the future. In the future. I'm just saying, right yeah. now, you have three, you're gonna have a fourth car there that's probably gonna fill up your driveway. Yeah, and I assume you have plenty of room to put another driveway if you had to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it looks like the land, is, to the, left. Yeah. the land is fairly it's big. And we also made sure to make, yeah. make something that uh, it's still within the, the required setbacks, uh, so it is. It's, it's in compliance in that matter, so yep. mm -hmm. it's far away from uh, 20 feet from the proper line. I think the setback minimum on that area is 15. So, where, what is Cypress Street off of? Where does that intersect? It's right over here. It's yeah, yeah, over by the Chaffee Elementary School. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Off of yeah. Austin Ave, I think. What is it over? Yeah, Wayne Street, oh, and okay, then yeah. Fairlawn is the other side okay. street. I know what. So you got you have a living room, a bedroom, and a, and a bathroom and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right, those are the four yeah. the living areas. And They're all decent size, but nothing major, nothing right. big. It's just doesn't so she has her own does, space. You know, space make sure everything is fully right. functioning for her. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We have a 800 square foot uh, living, yeah, which is yeah. approximate that we we like to stick with. I'd say some of what you 
you've got 923, and I know there's one. There's a walk-in closet. Oh, you know, do you, is that living space? Probably not. I wouldn't count closets. So uh, you're close enough to 800. Yeah, uh, yeah, yep. got a big mud boom, which is nice, but that's not living space either. That's, right. you know. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I nice. think it's a nice. Oh, I, like, I, I, I like the plan. I, I like thought. the design. Yeah, I like it when I saw it. Any I, my question was packing too, so right. it's something to we think about. We always ask the question because yeah. we don't know what there is on the thing because people don't put it on there. Yeah. yeah. Even though you put the layout of the buildings, packing is key too. Yeah. It's part of our decision making process. Yeah, I'm up to the discussion. Um, anybody want to make a motion? Or? Yeah, I'll make a motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Second that. Motion by Rick, seconded by Jeff to close the public hearing. Any discussion on that? Call for the vote. I vote aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Okay. I'll make a motion that we. Uh, these special permit for the Umar apartment on 10 Cypress Street based upon the drawings submitted. I don't see a date on them. Maybe that is on the first page. Right? Nope. Date's missing. Is there? How come? You're right. There is no date. <laughs> we when? updated it so many times. <laughs> when, 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 was the, when was the latest update, you know? A couple months ago. Okay. August. You just say okay. as submitted. As submitted. submitted. Yeah, as submitted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll make sure I put the date and I'll update the driveway. Okay. Okay. Like when I submit it to the building department. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay, motion by Rich, seconded by Jeff. Any more discussion? Call for the vote. I vote aye. 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 All right. Carried unanimously. Good luck to you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, June 715, we have a continued public hearing for 27 Industrial Park East. Application for site plan review, special permit, land disturbance, and stormwater management submitted by ZP Battery. Development Company LLC, 10 East Worcester Street, Worcester, Mass. The construction, installation, and operation of an 8 megawatt AC energy storage system and other electronic electrical equipment on the property located in the industrial zoning district. Property zoned by Mark Hadabo. Yeah, we do. We, they, the, these people at least. Uh, asking for an extension. I just want to know what the present date was. I'm sorry, the uh, action date? Yeah. Uh, December 20th. Okay. Okay. So we have a... Well, they, they, really, they really didn't need to fill that out then. No, they want to continue. I they just want, they just submitted it to, for, so we would put it on our next agenda. Right. Yeah, I guess, yeah. That's basically it. Right. So, um, so do we even need any action on it then? Uh, well, no. the recommendation would be to continue to the this to the November 14th. Oh, right, yeah, right. At 7.05. Yeah. Okay. They okay. used it for that purpose, but it's yeah. usually a purpose where you want some more time for action. Uh, I'll make that a motion. Well, we've got to come up with a time. 7.05. Right? <laughs> at this time, I recommend 7.05. <laughs> oh, you said that? Yeah. So kind of. All right, motion by Jeff. Seconded by Roger. Any more discussion? Call for the vote. I vote aye. 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 Unanimous. Oh, sorry. Gary Ann. Um, All right. Next up is the continued is the continued site plan review three two thirty five Main Street in Fairlawn Ave. Applicant for site plan review. The applicant is Cumberland Farms Inc. The property owner is 233 Main Street, LLC, VSH Realty, Inc., a.k.a. Cumberland Farms, Inc. Applicant is seeking to combine two parcels of land, 235 Main and 8 Fairlawn Ave. The applicant proposes to raise all structures and redevelop both parcels as one development site. 
with new gasoline pumps, a convenience store, parking, and associated site amenities. The property is located within the Village Business Zoning District. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, I'm Tom Reedy, an attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Cumberland Farms. With me this evening, uh, Phil Henry, the civil engineer from Civil Design Group. We also have Chuck Meek from First Hartford, the preferred developer, and then Aaron Fredette from McMahon Associates, our traffic engineer. Um, maybe point of order first. I know last time we were here, I think there were five members of the board. I don't think Matthew or Roger were here. I don't know if they have reviewed. Um, Do they have, have they signed the paperwork? I actually have not. Well, this is okay. Yeah, this is the second. So it's a continued. I just want to make sure that if they're going to be voting, um, that they have. I reviewed the prior meeting. I just need okay. To Perfect. So we're all set. Great. Yeah. I just like to know what I'm dealing with. Nope. Um, so the last time we were here was about a month ago. I think September 26th. Uh, we had made our presentation. You know, we walked through the site, uh, existing <coughs> conditions, proposed conditions, and then. Um, we had not yet sent out uh, the traffic report for a peer review, and we had not yet sent out the uh, stormwater report for a peer review. The stormwater report is currently out for peer review still. Uh, we expect to get that back prior to your November 14th meeting, and so that's what you know. I talked to Tony before. We'll, we'll be agreeing to extend the decision date till that date. That's really, I mean, frankly, kind of the outside date under the contract that Cumberland Farms has by which they have to either fish or cut bait from for this property. Um, we did send out the traffic peer review, and I know that you've got um, your peer reviewer here, and I think he's going to give a presentation. Uh, we were also, just before we yield and maybe turn it over however you want to handle it, uh, Mr. Chair, We've already we've been to the Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, and have received a special permit for the alteration extension of the pre-existing non-conforming gas use. So the gas use in this zoning district is not allowed, but the gas station has existed prior to that zoning prohibition. So we went through the Zoning Board of Appeals and received their approval last Thursday. And then we also received several variances, uh, certain relief for signage, square footage, um, parking in the front setback and also not completely complying with the landscape buffer. I will note as far as the latter two, the, the parking in the front setback and the landscape buffer, those things are happening already. Um, and where I think we're making it better as far as the landscape buffer, we're adding more, more landscape. So, you know, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it over to you however you want to. I know we've got the traffic folks here. I don't know if you want to focus on that or anything else. Um, did, so you pretty much got all of the variances that you had requested? Correct. Yes. Okay, um, sure. I think we can listen to the traffic okay. gentleman. <coughs> if you could just go right up there and just state your name and your business. And Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Kevin Dandrade uh, with TEC, Inc. I'm a principal with the firm, and our primary local address is 311 Main Street in Worcester. Um, I was happy to perform a service on behalf of the town to do a peer review of the traffic engineering for the Cumberland Farms redevelopment. Uh, I issued a letter uh, last week um, dated October 20th. Uh, a good chunk of this letter is more or less confirmation of what was done well with the, the different application materials. And then some other things, I have some suggestions for some minor changes that I think would be enhancements to the site. Overall, I think it was a very well prepared package uh, I think it's a good redevelopment project by taking three properties and taking an existing use and essentially just a minor expansion of that use, but on what I think is a much more well-organized site uh, and will be a much more attractive site. Um, as far as the site that you can see here up on the screen, um, just a couple things that I've recommended that be considered. Um, some things that are not necessarily you know, per the site plan regulations or the ordinances, but certain suggestions. First one is, you know, there's a pretty good wealth of parking um, throughout the site, certainly much more than exists today. Um, I'm recommending that, you know, some spots closest to the curb cut at Main Street be considered bank parking where, you know, they're designed to work, you know, with drainage and all that, but 
um, if they don't need them, it would certainly provide less friction near the main entrance off of Main Street. You know, for folks that are departing the pumps or just turning movements in around the access point. It's a suggestion for, I guess, right sizing the parking given that, you know, it's a pretty good wealth of parking for a use like this. Um, the, um, just a comment about the ballads, there were a number of them along the front, it's just something I talked about with Tony. Um, you know, that typically we'd see one per, um, centered in the front of each space with a higher concentration near the door. This is something that's operationally, something that's not a requirement of any kind, but um, something that as you get further away from the main doors, it might make an easier time for snow removal and things like that. Um, but certainly that's more of a preferential suggestion for something that they could consider. As far as the access to the dumpsters, um, they have some spaces in here. I just wanted to make sure I know, just in case there was a question, these could be occupied at a time where some of the dumpsters need to be unloaded. I think that's, you know, given the nature of a convenience store, you know, they're not, any trip is not there for that long. So I, I don't think it's gonna be an issue to have this temporarily blocked as the truck comes in waiting for that gap. I figured I'd address it just to hopefully alleviate the concern given the nature of the use. Number four, you can actually eliminate because I, I had failed to notice that I thought this was just a little alcove of pavement and I failed to see the actual striped lines for these other parking spaces that will co-occupy that area where the tanks are. I was suggesting that if they were over the tanks that they consider including no parking signs, but that's actually a place where they intend for folks to park, so that can be ignored. As far as the uh, traffic impact study, um, comments five through uh, eight are really just reiterating uh, that we are in consensus with the, the way the study was developed, the types of factors that they used, the counts that they did to try to get to the projected traffic condition for this use. Um, obviously, it makes it a lot easier to recognize the type of trip characteristics, knowing that there's already a four pump eight position station there today. There's already a convenience store, maybe not one that's gonna look as nice as this, um, but that use is already there. So it'll generate slightly more traffic given um, the better access, the larger site, the more available parking, and certainly the larger convenience store. But something I think is certainly in scale with what's there, in fact, not having taken credit for any of the other existing building uses that had once been occupied. So in my opinion, the study was very conservatively prepared, um, but appropriately done to show the board the metrics of delays and things like that. Overall, I think from an access management perspective, uh, it's wonderful that they can actually eliminate that existing curb cut that's here which was primarily that right into the existing gas station site. And then they consolidated the two curb cuts that were further to the south. You know, this is the type of redevelopment that I think is a good example of access management by reducing curb cuts where you don't need them and organizing them in such a ways you get good orderly flow between Main Street and Fairlawn Ave. <clears throat> Sight lines are superior. Uh, they did document them. I was out there again this evening, and you can see for nearly a thousand feet in each direction. Um, and one of the suggestions I have um, later in the letter um, only enhances that further, but to try to improve the pedestrian experience um, right along Main Street. Uh, they are already proposing to reconstruct this section of sidewalk along Main Street. This is actually within State Highway, so it's not necessarily something that this board has to weigh in on too heavily uh, because this would be something that DOT would consider as part of the access permit for this site. Um, because of the way that it's set back in this stretch now, <coughs> you can see it today at Fairlawn where we were involved with DPW with the pedestrian crossing safety improvements here, 
But on Fairlawn, the stop bar is actually in front of the crosswalk where once you get a second vehicle, you actually block the crosswalk. So as they continue with their discussions with DOT, I'm recommending that if they can transition this down closer to the edge of the street while still having a good grass buffer, and there's an existing utility pole there and one there, they can pull it down a little bit where now the stop bar can be behind the crosswalk like you'd have at a normal intersection. That will actually open up the sight lines even better than what they've documented within their study. But again, that element within Route 12 is State Highway, so it's more or less a suggestion that they consider as they petition the state for their permit. As we look at Fairlawn and uh, looking at the characteristics for their truck sweep, um, you can see the outline of the truck sweep here as they come from, say, Sutton Ave, take a left, come down Main Street, take a right in the Fairlawn, and then do a um, counterclockwise flow through the site to access the tanks or other deliveries. This is pretty tight in here. Um, they're already proposed to either put in new curbing or reset curbing pretty much around the whole edge except for this spot. This is another area where I'm recommending that they do consider resetting it to actually give a few more feet to give some more room for that truck sweep. At the same time, there's already more or less a sidewalk panel there along that edge of Fairlawn. But in reviewing the plans, I've recommended to uh, the board, to planning and DPW that there's a great opportunity for getting a sidewalk connection on the south side of Fairlawn that they could build along their frontage. Um, because if you were to look at the property across the street, there's all head in parking and there's no real opportunity for municipal sidewalk on that side. So with the removal and resetting of the curbing, if they were to do the same thing and just hold this right away line and build a five to six foot wide platform for the sidewalk there, they can get a nice neat edge that meanwhile also gives them some extra operating room here. It's a minor change to the plan, but I think an improvement within the public right away along Fairlawn that I know DPW was you know, excited about the uh, recommendation because they could continue the sidewalk project in the future into the neighborhood on a side that only has the one driveway to cross. Um, talking with um, the representative from McMahon this morning, just to clarify a couple of these comments, you know, there is one utility pole here where the town could always work with the applicant just to rather than reset that utility pole unnecessarily, work around it just to get that public access for a sidewalk up along this edge. I think uh, that's more or less it for the recommendations, but overall summary is that I think the plan was well prepared, the study was well prepared. I don't have any concerns about other offsite impacts, but given the nature of convenience stores, more than 60% of the traffic that goes to facilities like this is already on Route 12 or the adjacent street for some other reason, and they're passed by traffic that comes in and then departs in the same direction. So I don't expect uh, anything in the way of uh, noticeable impacts once you get away from the site as traffic normalizes. But that's a summary of the letter and happy to answer any questions. Sure, I have um, <clears throat> one quick question. The first section that you talked about, the front parking, I can't remember what you called it. Yes. What was that? You used a term for? Ba banked parking. It's essentially, if they don't need the parking right now, yeah. um, then the board, you could essentially approve that depending on the actual needs on the site. You know, if, they, if these spots are occupied all the time and they need the extra spaces, great. But to me, it seems a little overparked. Oh, I'm sorry. So you just mean don't build it. Everything's designed for it. But in the future, if you need it, you'll have approval to build it. Yeah, it could gotcha. be it could I, be grass space for now. Yep. Um, um, but than, certainly they, they know their business previous, better than us, less but than previous, uh, less impervious. Yeah. Um, so there was a, uh, I think there was some discussion about that left turn coming out of Fairlawn and like an inter, like 
maybe interference with that new crosswalk that was put in. Is there anything involved in that? I, I've talked with DPW a couple different times about it. Um, I think there was a historic concern about certain trailers that would come out and try to make that left turn. Mm -hmm. um, but I think DPW has already checked it with their own heavier vehicles with trailers and it's worked. Um, that state highway ends more or less right here. So out of all the different improvements along Main Street, this was actually the only one that was within the state's jurisdiction. But the state reviewed it. Um, I don't think there's a need to adjust it because of this project unless they wanted to change the circulation pattern to come out here. But that's not what that's they're proposing. Doing, right. And you okay, want to tighten that, that corner up. You want to take that corner in a little bit, too. Yeah, so this, this would actually give a little help, bit more room. That would help a little bit. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That would all be done with the state, right? We would not be involved in whatever this part, is. Yeah. 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 But you can offer recommendations for what occurs here, but the state's got the authority and the jurisdiction. Of so are you, pr are you proposing that we request them to build the sidewalk or just leave a spot? To be build the sidewalk along the frontage. Um, they're already doing the curbing work, so instead of the grass panel, if they did a five-foot wide sidewalk behind the curbing, then that would be appropriate in my mind for not only um, a public improvement that happens to be along the frontage, but to get pedestrians from Main Street to their front door because there's no pedestrian connection now unless you're can, right? walking yeah. through here. Yeah. Yeah. Which and is it, and if you didn't no have bueno. to do, if you banked all that parking there, you'd be saving money for on, on that part to do. You know, if I did the square footage of the sidewalk in that parking area, it'd probably be pretty close. Yeah, and I think too that um, even in their conversations with the state, I'd be shocked if the state didn't say, "How are you getting from the public sidewalk to your facility?" So I think this is <coughs> this is good for the town, but I also think it's good for walking customers to Cumberland Farms. Um, I think that's all I had for uh, anybody else have any comments well yeah I'd just like to what you're feeling about the sidewalk <laughs> yeah one out yeah I mean it makes valid <coughs> points yeah. Yeah. there's gonna be a lot of people coming okay. down the sidewalks on Main Street to go to Cumberland Farms yeah I mean so there's to get in there other than walking through your grass area yeah under your sign through the pumps and into your into your uh, or even down sidewalk. Fairlawn into it yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want me to just address the sidewalk on Fairlawn and then we can go to the other stuff because we've obviously got responses to, to all of it. You know, can I, I can appreciate um, what's been said, and, and while it may appear on the plan like a simple change, I think it in practice is not a simple change, right? I think that utility pole, and Phil, maybe I'll turn to you to start talking about when you start making one change, what it means for the rest of the site. And, I mean, we're very comfortable with what we have at this point. Um, and so maybe if you yes. want to talk about practically what those changes would mean. Yeah, so I think taking everything as a, as a whole, you know, we think the site functions <coughs> well as, um, as is. H however, you know, you know, adding sidewalks is obviously not a bad thing, right? It's, it's a matter of how, how you do it. Um, so I see with regards to the Fairlawn, with regards to the Fairlawn, yeah, let me see if I can. With regards to the Fairlawn <coughs> sidewalk and sort of road widening here, you, you know that that utility pole there um, is not in a it, it's it, it's in a surmountable location. I, I think if the if the sidewalk were to be five feet, um, I don't know if you would include the curb or not, but I think at an obstruction, you you only need 36 inches to pass at that one particular spot yeah. so so the a potential sidewalk uh introduction can like engulf that utility pole if you will um but because there would be a sidewalk there you would need a tip down ramp you would need a ramp there um and but that that utility pole would need to be located on the level landing of the ramp it can't be located on the actual ramp portion of a ramp mm -hmm. it needs to be on the bottom level landing or the top level landing but I think it would be accomplished to be on the on the lower level landing. So, um, and then and then going further west, um, I don't know if if the recommendation is to continue the sidewalk along the frontage. We we would propose if the board requires slash requests 
a, a sidewalk introduction, we would we would request that it be terminated uh, here. I think this utility pole is potentially more insurmountable because yeah. if you look here, yeah. uh, this is only a f between the property line and the and the sidewalk or, or um, sorry edge of edge of road is just over five feet, while down here it's it's over nine feet. So one could argue that you could push this back say four feet and still get a five foot sidewalk because we, we don't want the sidewalk on the private property and we don't want to get into easements if right. we could avoid it. We're, yeah. we're getting out of a potential issue on Main Street. Yeah. So we don't want to reintroduce um, another easement yep. potentially on private property. Um, so however, I guess what I'm saying is if there were no utility poles, we could, we could snap a line off this property line, say five, five and a half feet or five feet that would, or five and a half feet, that'd be face of curb. And then we would increase the edge of pavement, say four feet here, and then it would taper down to zero. My, I guess my recommendation or my, my request for clarification would be, I think the, si the widening of this of, from, from, from here to here would be dependent on making sure we get 36 inches clear, w clear with proud of, of the utility pole, mm -hmm. and, then, and then have a single line where whatever makes sense coming back and tying into a curb curb line here so it may not be four feet here it may be three feet and change i think it's all be the, i think it's all going to be dependent on working backwards from that location and then once we cross this um i don't know how the how the planning board feels but our request would be to just kind of turn it in and then leave this vegetated i understand that there's a neighborhood behind there but uh we we just we don't want to get involved with with the utility pole interaction okay you're going to put vegetation, so you're going to put... It's going to be grass. Grass? Yeah, it would be grass. Well, there's plantings on property, on the landscape plan, but in the right-of-way, we're just proposing grass. And, and you go basically extend it to the corner of the building, right, right where you're out. And then kind of yeah, take a 90 just, into the... Just 90 into the... Right. Yeah. Go. yeah. Especially yeah. that makes sense. I think that's fair. Yeah, people coming from yeah. Main Street, they're not going to probably continue on. My only recommendation for looking at it across, along the frontage um, is that... If in the event that DPW wants to continue it someday, they'd have to potentially get a construction easement from Cumberland Farms to build it, even if the, the whole sidewalk was in the right of way, but there was construction that occurred for the three, four, or five feet behind it, just a feather in the soil. They could potentially have to get an easement, construction easement, temporary easement from Cumberland Farms at the time that they build it. That's why I was suggesting, I was not suggesting anything with the pole but that just building the sidewalk along the frontage while there's the chance to do it while not needing any easement. That was, that was the goal of the comment was get a facility that can then be a launching point for DPW at some point in the future, but not get into relocating poles. And I'm sure that there's a way that we can look at finessing the curb returns so that whether it was a more level crossing in this area versus a traditional tip down that we could try to make it work geometrically and grading wise. But yeah. at, at that point too, on the, on the right hand side of Fairline, is, is, the, is the strip mall, whatever, that is still that? That's still, yes, that still all right through here. Yeah. Um, th there must be so probably 15, could, 16 so, head oh, installs. Yeah. No, no, I know, but so it, it, it extends kind of a mess. How, even with the main structure of Cumberland Farm. Yeah, I think it, one, I want to say it goes back to about here. Oh, so it's uh, not that, you know, it's not that, I mean, one of my proposal is that the sidewalk could go on the right-hand side on that side of the... A, road, after, road, after that point? After that, yeah. Potentially, yeah, and I think... Cross um, over and then go that way? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just saying, I mean, because it's, uh, it's all... Yeah. I'm, I don't know. No, I'm just, it's, it'll show it on <laughs> Google. I'm just trying to save yeah. them the issue. Yeah, that I mean, seemed, that I mean, seems like it's going to be a big... Anything can be done. It's just you need you need space and time to do it, so... Um, it's just a matter of who, who so, wants. So I have a quick question. Um, I don't know if anybody, like uh, any decision makers are here from Cumberland Farms tonight, but what do you think the chances of us getting like a five-foot construction easement to go along with this approval? Just We're, a future five-foot construction easement. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I'm not a decision maker, but I can, <laughs> I, I can tell you that that's – to give an open-ended construction easement, I think would be, I, I can't see them doing it. I mm. can appreciate that. I mean, I've seen it elsewhere where a municipality comes to them and says, hey, we're putting in a sidewalk or we're fixing the drainage in a road. Yeah. We need a 
temporary construction easement, and they say, especially in the location that it would be proposed, it's, yeah, of course, you know, no problem at all. Um, so I don't see an issue, but I just think giving, giving carte blanche would <clears throat> probably not happen. I just figured you guys look like a couple of good guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I agree that I'm sure in the future – a temporary construction for the sidewalk. I'm sure nobody's going to really care about that. And you always say you're, the, you're a municipality, so you always have the power of a taking if you need to, right. even for an easement. Send Tony down to take it. That's right. <laughs> Tony the wrench. <laughs> um, the, any? The, the, go ahead. On Sorry. On 12, that, that, that sidewalk is in, is in the right of way, correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. That, and they're looking to reconstruct this whole stretch. Um, my only recommendation is that is they move it further out. Well, move it further out, right. Yeah, and that's... that's that's ultimately DOT's DOT. call, but just yeah, that's what we're, but that that's, makes sense. That's we'll have the conversation with them. That makes sense. I mean, and again, it's you, once you start, yes, on the plan, it's simple, but then in real life, it looks like you get some drainage structures, maybe in the roadway, you got a utility pole there, and so it just, so we'd be hesitant to agree with you for that if it turns out that DOT, because they ultimately they are going to tell us uh, what, what's good, what we're going to do. Um, and I can, for, lot, for site distance, too, that's the Cutting that curve back would make sense too. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, we even we went through plenty of iterations. You know, the, one of the problems is if we do go straight across where we're talking about, you know, where the mouse is right now. That's um, I think that's right of that's uh, public right away. This is not. So how it how it's tied in? Like we can't go on somebody else's like property survey issues, et cetera, et cetera. So yes. it's just. Yeah, so in, a, in an ideal world, we, we love to just connect back here. We understand the comment. Um, but then there's off-site work that we would need to do opposite the street. So, and then obviously there would have to be some removal of sidewalk on private property. So I guess we'll see what the DOT says, right? Yeah. Have you talked to the DPW at all? Have they seen this yeah, we, plan? We've been at the informal. Uh, You've been at the tech review. Yeah. But I don't think uh, they saw this thing. I, I spoke with Jared can. about this. Yeah. You talked to Jared? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do think that other one, that, other one, that, that potential that could be done to fix the sidewalk on the other side of Fail on Ave. That is on private property. Did Jared review this? He saw, yeah, I saw this. All right. The, the setback sidewalks and stop lines is a problem all the way up. Yeah, that is on private property. Main Street. Oh, yeah. Uh, I live on Main Street in that scenario. So. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just saying all those side streets, it's the same problem. Just some of them aren't in DPW or um, DOT space like, like this one is. So. Any more discussion? Any other questions for anybody? Well, it has nothing to do with that. I have a sign issue myself. Do you want to finish maybe yeah. with yeah, – just because there was a couple yeah. other things yeah, on this yeah, sorry, list, if you don't, about, if you don't mind. Oh, I thought we were. Trying to get to, like, a closure on all peer reviews at the next hearing. So just verbally, with regards to the to the land bank part, yeah. um, we we respectfully request that we get to we get to build these, these wow. parking spaces. So – I got to tell you, you guys, you guys are doing something yeah, good nope, because yeah. all, your, all your facilities, all the parking is taken yeah, up. I go that's to the a, store all the time. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a hard time wow. finding parking. And this so is going to be – this kind of questioning that. This will be, this will be a different uh, – Kind of save you. I, th I don't know if you have it here, Phil, but we had – I know for the ZBA we showed them some interior images of what the new Norton store is going to look like. And, and you'll just see the programming inside is going to be different than like – your older Cumberland Farms and older, newer Cumberland Farms, yeah. too. You know, you've got the pizzeria yeah, piece yeah. in there. You've got the, like, a sandwich market in there, et, et cetera. So I think, yeah. When I get a bigger noontime crowd, they're going to need That's probably the parking. Time, sure. The parking's needed, yeah. Okay. That's the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, routinely when we look at sites, they're looking for even 40 spaces, which obviously is, yeah, that can't happen here. This is a small okay. site. But, okay. Um, so, um, so we are... Um, Foreshadowing that that response. Okay. And then with regards to the spacing of the um, bollards at the at the front of the store, so over time the bollard spacing has decreased uh, to what you see in here, which is five feet. Yeah, and and, the, and really? the and the issue, as I understand it, the the uh, result is because of people unfortunately driving into the buildings. Yeah, no, so, I agree with the you. idea yeah. is with the idea is at five feet. Why do you think Main Street's so wide? So, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, so the theory is that at five feet of spacing, yeah. a small car will cannot fit in between them and will hit one, and uh, like a large SUV or truck will take on so two two bombs at impact. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's why we and that and that's just what they do. No, I, I believe they're so becoming I'm, a no. fact of life. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They got sued, and I think it was Chicopee where. They might not have had bollards or maybe just one, and it Never was... Never mind somebody walking out of the store and... I mean, you see all the bent ones in front of all the other stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you oh, go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, they yeah. get hit. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, imagine if Cumberland Farms sold alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> well, some do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> for another day. So, uh, I think that... Dumps, and dumpster access, obviously, fine. Yeah, if, the dumpster access, that's fine. Yeah. And then... Um, there's a DOT access permit that their suggestion was to to have that provided to the town prior to building permit. That's DOT is a little beyond our control, like a lot of things. And so the reality is if we don't get the DOT access permit, we can't do any work in the right of way. So we're ultimately not going to get the certificate of occupancy. So instead of saying, don't let us start until we get this access permit, I mean, we would ask for it before the certificate of occupancy, which is obviously something that's going to happen. So that would be the only change, I think, to, okay. to that suggestion. So what is your anticipated, how long would this project take? I think typically they like to see an 18-week construction, 18 to, to 20, so depending five, on. So like five months? Yep. So during that time, is that facility going to be open, or are you just going to shut the whole thing down? I think they shut the whole thing down and just. I can't imagine. A lot of, there's a lot. There's a lot. A lot. There's a lot that's yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, much as it is a beautiful, beautiful building. I mean. I know. I know. Wow, it's cheaper. Any, <laughs> any other questions from the board? So. Not on, I have a not question. On that. Yeah. Does not pertain to traffic? Not on traffic. That's the one I was bringing up that they wanted to okay. get everything. So thank you, you very much. Everything? Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So mine is with the height of the sign. Okay. Okay. Uh, could you tell me the height of your existing sign you got there now? I think it might be 16 feet. 16? I think so. Why you need 25 feet? Um, so your zoning allows up to 30 for gasoline signs. So... I mean, it's obviously something that the, the town has thought about. And I'm, the pitch that I gave to the ZBA and I think the, probably the pitch I would give to you and what Phil and I were just talking about prior to this is visibility. And given folks with, you know, you're looking at gas prices, you're trying to determine whether or not this is a place that you're going to go to or if it's too expensive, the higher they are, the further back that you can see them. And I know that on the northerly side, um, where that shopping center is, they have like a, a V south. that heading south. Thanks, they have that V-shaped sign. So I think a 25 foot would have the gas price stick above that from the right angle. I'm just concerned that it, you know, that it's higher than a lot of our other signs mm -hmm. along Route 12. That's, that's a whole. Okay. Yeah, you know what it is at the Sunoco station on the other side. I'm. Down the road here, I don't think it's 25 feet high. I mean, just because we say it could be 30 feet, I don't know. I just wanted to, I, you know, as it is now, you can have people walking right underneath this thing <laughs> going through it. You know, it's just. There, I mean, there is a planter there. There's a 30-inch planter, and there's plantings well, all around. I'm sure it so won't be. People I'm sure it won't probably look like that, right? You will have this stuff like that. Oh yeah, I'm no, just, there's, and I don't know that we have. I don't think we have a fully rendered because what we had done since between the first and the second zoning board of appeals oh, meeting. Yeah, so you do say planter. There you go. So you'll see the, the plantings, and then there's a planter base about 30 inches, I believe. And where you see it wrapped, you, you see those supports, how they're just white pylons right now? Yeah, I know uh, they wanted stone. Stone, and so that we've agreed. Be, that looks fantastic. To, yeah, I think it's going to be really nice. Yeah, yeah. That was, I think, a really good compromise. And I think that, that depiction right there shows the, that shows that's 30. That's um, 25. Yeah, 25. That's the the what they're of, proposing. The undercarriage of the canopy is 18 feet. Mm -hmm. So you probably look with the fire suppression canopy 20 and change. This is just a representation, obviously. Try as What's your best guesstimate of the sign that's, you know, that triangular sign that's right across the street? Yeah. How, how tall is that? I think it's a little bit s smaller. Um, it isn't that tall. But keep in mind that, that the existing sign is five feet off the property line, less than that. This is 
So this is almost, I think, yeah. 16 feet 15. off the property line, where, in, where actuality, it's actually 35, 40 feet off of the curb line. Hmm. So, please step back three times. If you go to this the... This concern, your, your Cumberland other. Farm sign is so high, you, you <laughs> can't see it. <laughs> if you go, <laughs> yeah, go to the other... Go up, go how, high, how, how high is the building? 32, so, yeah, 32, 32 to, to the, the ridge. ridge. It looks yeah, if you so scroll, go to the top picture. Perception, the sign looks higher than the building. Is yeah. yeah, well, the building's yeah. 100 feet back. If you go to go to the top, you might be able to see the. This one? Yeah, go one more. I just don't know if you could see in the oh, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, that looks nice, doesn't it? That view. Yeah. Such a nice. I like your 16 foot better. Yeah. Than, uh, 25. Understood. Understood. I'm just noting. I, I appreciate okay. it. That sign is very visible that you have now. Chris, did you have something else? I just have a, a question. So on the plans. Um, as far as a fence in the back, mm -hmm. so what is currently there and what are you proposing? Just because there's neighbors, you know, it's a neighbor, yeah. very think, residential neighborhood. Yes. So what what we see is, yes, yes. Stockade. there's a stockade fence stretching from the corner back to about like right here and then it transitions to chain link. That's what we saw on the survey. And it's right on the property line, and, it, and then in some cases it goes on to off the property. So, in cases like that where nobody knows ownership of it or what the current owners don't know, we, we leave it alone. Okay. So, is it in decent shape, or is it in? Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily recall, to be honest with you. Um, it's standing. <laughs> that's, up on the that's about it. It's, it's not. It's not leaning. It's not falling down. I, I wouldn't say it's in great shape. Yeah, just because I mean it's gonna it's gonna be a much busier area. I mean you get to figure that with the convenience stores set back like that. Um, I just don't know if uh, noise and you know traffic and stuff. If I would imagine the building would probably block out most of the noise. Mm -hmm. And the the traffic's already there, so. What's the and I'd say, in fairness, if those are operational businesses on that lot now, you know, mm. the fence is there now. It's. Yeah, yeah my it my only comment would be: you got the stockade fence behind the building. Okay, the building is going to protect them from from lights on the cars anyway. I'm more concerned about the ones to the left. Yeah. Like number chain. one, oh, yes. chain link. Yeah. Or it's just chain link. Yeah. Chain link. So I found a picture from yeah. last year, so it gives you some representation of how close the existing building is. So that's the stockade fence. Oh, jeez. I, I think I'm still Oh, okay. So you, what you're saying is those are all existing fences. You're not putting any Correct. fences in. Correct. No. Oh, Correct. Okay. I thought you were putting in the stockade. No, it's not on fence. your property. Either. Correct. Doesn't. That, that I think what Phil was saying, it doesn't. It's on the property line, and so that's one of those where, oh. who put it in, whose is it, is there a light? You know, there, we don't see anything of record for the fence. So in those cases, we kind of say, okay, if it isn't I, broke, I don't, don't fix it at this time. Residents' houses at versus the property lines anyway. I don't know how far back they go. Do you have an assessor's map? No, not with me. No, so that's the one right that. behind is uh, positioned at the intersection of June and Farallon. So, I mean, my estimate would be that it's probably 25 feet away from that at the, at the nearest corner. Yeah, I'm more concerned about light, okay? The light, uh, you know, with a with a stockade fence, that property there, they, they're they not going to see the headlights of cars mm -hmm. coming and parking mm -hmm. at night, okay? You planning a 24-hour just are. like the rest of them? Correct. You know, so all night long, cars are going to be pulling in there with their lights on and blaring into the houses next to behind it so if well, I just want to follow that train of thought so you're worried about four one two this. three and four yeah and I was I'm well, looking two, at it. some of them at least you have fences around your dumpsters yeah, yeah, so exactly. three and four fences too right? okay. that's all screened six foot high that's, all, white fence. that's all screened yeah. right yeah. that's all screened yeah. well how can you protect one and two so it would be and I guess it's Maybe just make your enclosure for the dumpsters longer <laughs> than you got dumpsters. I don't sort know. Sort of landscaping do you have? That's here your land. Oh, yeah, that's that's. that's so, so it looks right. like it says wooded. Okay. So is there woods there? Yeah, there, it's it's um, 
Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's certainly a, a tree line here. There are there are a number of single trees here, but we didn't show like a tree line because we think that would be. Because I think there are trees back there's there. There's three or yeah, four there's trees. Yeah. Again, but that's not that's not on your property over your, definitely on the other side of the fence. That's um, right on the what, property. What the trees? Line. Yeah. Um, it, they're right on the property line. <laughs> like, like the the overhang though overhangs onto the property. Okay. So well, again, we, I'm just concerned if there's. What if, if we, the house Rich? What if we just like, so we have a white vinyl fence that goes around the, um, the dumpsters. Yep. So what if we just came down toward the street and then went that way, went south, yeah. to the end of that? What is that area? That. This air tower. Is right here. Is that what you're talking about? Or this area? Yeah. That's a snow storage. That, oh. yeah, so we just came down here, right? And then went over to the end of that. Would um, continue that white vinyl fence. That's where the septic system is going. So we can't, we couldn't continue oh. that all the way around because the leaching field would be under the back of it. You could. Yeah, and I wonder if yeah. adding a couple of yeah. pieces of stockade fence oh, back here, just to, yes. I mean, it sounds like it's this, right? It's this, yes. you know, what are these 10 by 20 fills? So it's a yeah. 20 foot area here. You know, uh, we'll just exactly. say like, okay, you know, from here, let's make sure that it is right. at least to here. Well, you know, I think it, yeah, it's a measure because as you had indicated, we're not quite clear in a plan where it transitions the yeah. chain link yeah. in some of that point, but just to make sure that those spots have right in front of them, stuck in front of them. Yeah. Okay, so you don't get those straight on headlights. You know, you could do it with landscaping. It or makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. landscaping or, or a couple of bushes right along the front of one and two. I don't know. So actually, wow. I have a comment. So that says chain link fence, but there's actually chain link fence and stockade. Oh, so oh, all right. And, makes it easier. Do you want to, well, show I guess that? over the years, those Mind people are those like, <laughs> people so, building everything all over the place. So uh, this is right. This is in the exact area that we're talking about right here continues on yeah so it actually there's a chain link fence and a stockade and you oh. see all of these trees yeah, are actually you can see the on house our side yeah okay. you can see the house in the back there so like just for contextual purposes yeah like there's the there's the sunny's uh the building in the back yeah. and then we're just panning over yeah. Yeah. I want to keep the i want to yeah. keep the uh so, lights yeah. within the within the yeah, so it looks uh, like yep. it looks yep. like there is fence. okay yeah yep. so we'll that. okay anything else Okay, so we're yeah. I mean, so I'll say, let us know because we hope to come back just one last time, and then, you know, ideally get an approval. So if there's anything else, you know, I we'd like it now, and if not, then we have the stormwater peer review out, which I think Tony has said you expect by that November fourteenth hearing. So are we going to move forward with that proposed sidewalk that we talked about on Fairlawn, not all the way? But yeah, to that. To that elbow there? To so the elbow? You can make it? To your building. You think you can make it work? Because yeah. I, I do expect I mean, some foot traffic going there. <laughs> I, I, think it's a, I think it would be a good thing. I think it would be a great thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you might even get I think it will cut down on your landscaping fees or replanting grass, too. Because <laughs> everyone walks over it if you didn't have one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this plan's a home run for the town. Well, well again, it gives... Yeah. It gives people a, a safe way entering your yeah there are a lot of kids property. from the neighborhood it's the right, yeah, i think it's the right thing to the do. store it's Thomas, the right thing that makes a lot of sense you got that yeah. right yeah. it is the right thing to do and it's such an eyesore right now <clears throat> this is great all right so we we said nothing we don't want to we don't want to do anything with the fencing in the back is that where we, we ended up because there is stockade already yeah. and we want to see the sidewalk to that little yep. 90 degree turn I can't, was there anything else that we wanted to them well, to address? Is it on, to, to Richard's point about parking space one, maybe, d do we confirm that there's fencing and that there's going to be at, the the light is going to stay on the site, so to speak? Well, what they, that? so there is stockade all yeah, along yeah, the back. Yeah, so the whole way? Well, we yes, just, yeah, the whole way. Yeah. 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 Where well, the chain that, link is, it's an addition. So there's stockade on the easterly side and then you can put some so so it's probably a scenario where at some point one person built a stockade and the other people built problem is the septic so what if we can if you can near the trees interfere with the roots of the trees if you get your septic that close yeah yeah well it's not that far at the back it was i think the yeah i'm just looking to diffuse the light yeah i'd be ticked off if i was behind here and every every 
10 minutes and you get his car's <laughs> pulling up. And even the car that goes and uses your pump if the air, they're going to leave their lights running as yeah. they're sitting there pumping up their tires. Yeah. Anything you could do to keep this yeah. all the light of the vehicles within your property it's is really great. Almost those two houses. And yeah. Okay. All right. Anything That's else helpful. from the board? And we're going to what? Continue this to November fourteenth? No. Yes. Yes, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Too, we're um, we're up against an action uh, date as well. Um, the plans were submitted on September twelfth. And so there's a 45-day for site plan review, 45-day action period. Okay. Um, would recommend that uh, as part of this extension of time, that we also get an extension of the action date. Okay. Is that a problem? No. So I think you guys need to fill one of these out. So with respect to the I, I would, sidewalk, I yeah. would say do it for the sem like first week in December, whatever that. Means. Don't it? Well. Whatever you yeah. need. Okay, yeah. thank you. Do you see my face? Just, yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, no, no, I'm just trying to. I guess these guys uh, are going to work through the winter, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, so, with respect to the sidewalk, is, is the board expecting us to come back by the next hearing with this sidewalk shown? And, and the reason why I ask is because it, it makes sense to, to take the sidewalks in totality. Because yes. the connection with Fairlawn will hinge on where ultimately the Main Street sidewalk is going to be, if it's going to be moved. So, so but, but to that end, it, 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 it then sort of like pushes it towards like a condition of approval rather than in the plan before approval. So we're happy to do either, but if, if it's the former, we would be showing it connecting to the, sh to the sidewalk shown on this plan. That's fine. I would do that. And if you move the... If you move the one on Main Street, then you're going to have yeah, to readjust. Yeah, we can't readjust. do anything about that anyway, yeah. so. He's got to go through the state for that anyway. Okay. State's right. a lot smarter than us, so. Yeah. We think. Well. <laughs> okay. And you only got the one light in the back. How, how close are you to that back line small, on the I building? Small case close. Ten, 10 feet. 20, 20, 20, 20. And what do you got, one uh, wall light over a door or something back there? Um, there'll probably be some socket lighting here just to light the sidewalk for the walkway back here. And okay. then there's a sight light that will shine forward only. It's, it'll be a shielded light for the dumpster okay. area. For the dumpster area. Okay. So, I said, I'm, I'm one for keeping all the light within your sights. Yeah. Is it okay? So just 10 feet, it, it's, it's going to be like yeah. no okay. maintenance yeah. of, okay. in the back of the, I mean, 10 feet's really tight, I would say, in the back of the building. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what it. they're getting. Yeah. Um, I think it's like five That's all they've given me. Right. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just For wondering how, how, you know, what, you know, how anything's ever going to get back. Not that anything should get back there, but. No, no I mean, there's an egress door back there, and like. Um, That's home. Right. And people will probably bring in some small goods in that area. Okay. But yeah, it's not intended to, like, there's no drive through back there. That's how I'm at, yeah. There's, there's, there's no right. point of sale back right, there. I'm thinking about, like, even getting the snow out of there at 10 feet is going to be. Yeah, well, that, that, that will be hand shoveled. Yeah. Yeah, because right now we yeah. have, like, a shed in the back. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. That's a lot of shoveling back there. Well, ju just along the sidewalk. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Tony, go ahead. And Mr. Chairman, for me too, we also received um, uh, two communications, uh, one from the Board of Health, um, dated October 13th, 2022, um, in a nutshell, that they, um, that they are to review the septic plans uh, for review and approval. Um, and following up with the Board of Health agent late last week, she has received um, plans and currently under review for the board's um, information. Excellent. We, were, um, we also received a courtesy copy from the Oxford Historical Commission. Um, the um, letter was addressed to, uh, to the building commissioner and um, it was with respect to the, um, the, uh, the pylon sign, canopy signs, um, the side that along the side of the building. Um, these, um, happy to read this into the full record, but, but would note that um, these were items that were um, considered through also the, the Zoning Board of Appeals, which they received their approval on, uh, on Thursday. Um, there was a remaining question 
as was echoed here with respect to the pylon sign and, and particularly its height. Um, yeah. but, um, but the concerns have, um, most of the current concerns have been addressed. Um, so I would just wish to share that with the board. Okay. All right, so we have a request to, um, to extend the time, the action time for this planning board meeting. <laughs> dated 10-24-22 uh, to extend to November 14th. So moved. Second. Motion by Mark, seconded by Roger. Any discussion? Call for, oh. Oh, and just would ask, sorry, uh, that there, that be at 7-10. Um, 7-10. We have the 7 yeah. yeah, you got work quick. Okay. You accept that <laughs> amendment to your motion? <laughs> Yes. This is the time. That's all. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? Call for the vote. I vote aye. 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 Carried unanimously. See you then. Thank you. See you then. Thank you. Anything? Thank you. Tony, is there anything else besides the? Uh, no, we've done the plan director's reports. So now it's the uh, executive. Is it too early to do that? No. no. You want to take? You want to take like five <laughs> minutes, right? Before we did it. Well. Um, it's yeah. Let's. Um, so, Mr. Chair, the, that's the executive session. Um, if you so declare, um, is to um, enter the executive session. Pursuant to uh, General Laws Chapter 38, Section 21, um, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regard regarding Oxford Land Ventures LLC versus the Town of Oxford Planning Board. As wow, the Chair totally so declares um, that any open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body. I just wanted to hit the bathroom before we did that. Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. Um, I guess can we do that? Can we just declare that and then, and then take a two-minute break while they? We... Sure. Well, I, I think the chairman needs to say I move that we go into a okay. executive session. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Just read. The I, second, I second the motion. We vote, and then we. You can say right. I, I move that we take Here a we go. recess and reconvene in five minutes. Yep. Um, is that the exact? That's this right here, right? Yes. yes. All right. I'm. Um, see if I can read this. I move that the planning board enter the executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 38, Section 21, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation regarding Oxford Land Ventures LLC versus the Town of Oxford Planning Board at L Land Court Case Number 22, MISC 0004632. Uh, as the chair so declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the pu public body. And I, I, do I do the adjournment part too? If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, so, um, and to echo what was just stated, um, to notify the public that, um, that the board, um, that after the executive session, the board will not reconvene in the public session. And I was just trying to say that. Executive session a roll call vote must be ordered as well. Um, so therefore, step one, that the board shall not reconvene in, um, in public session after the executive session. Yep. If you wish to notify. Yes. But also that a roll call be taken to enter into executive session. And then if the board may wish to take a brief recess. I second his motion. Okay. I second his motion. Um, and I just, do I have to just mention that after the executive session, the board will not reconvene in public session? Yeah. All right, so we have a motion. And I second it. Seconded. Uh, any discussion? Now we have to call for a vote. Roll, roll, call. roll call vote. Uh, I vote aye. And I vote aye. I vote aye. I vote aye. 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 Carried unanimously. We are in executive session. <laughs>